Hey, good morning, cats. What's happening? It's kind of a rainy, wet morning. So there won't be any motorcycle riding. Oh, no. I'll melt if I get wet. <laughs> no, really, I have no reason to go riding anywhere today. Um, being the weather, what it is. Plus, I have other things that I need to attend to today. Uh, but this morning, you know, as it was raining, um, I was digging around in a closet. You know, you, got, you get these closets. I, I mean, I have numerous closets or storage places in the house there. And uh, you'll get these spots where you put stuff and it's been there for years and years and years and you just totally forget about it, you know, crammed back in a corner somewhere. And uh, for some reason, I just started pulling stuff out. I thought, what the heck is all this? And uh, I've met, I found a cool discovery, something I had totally forgot about. I have this button collection. And I think I probably assembled it back when I was probably in my 20s. It had to be a long time ago. Uh, but it's got some interesting pins. It's got uh, Richard Nixon. Nixon's the one. Another Nixon pin, another Nixon pin. Oh, Kennedy. John F. Kennedy pin. Uh, Clinton Gore. That's a newer one, though, I would think. I, I don't know. POWs never have a nice day. Honda, we're number one. I don't know about that, but... Got all kinds of stuff. Uh, even the nicest people get stoned. Yeah, that was me back then. Disco Tex, I don't know that. Nielsen, son of Schmielsen. These are our older bands. But this one here caught my attention. I've got plenty of ambition. I just hate to waste it on work. And I remember the day that I got that pin. It was, a, I think it was a Sunday afternoon after church. And we went to uh, my grandmother's house. And I remember we had no sooner been in the front door and my grandmother was eager to hand me that pin. I've got plenty of ambition. I just hate to waste it on work. And I was a little confused at first because I thought, what the heck? Why would Grandma give me this pin? And of course, all the adults there, my mom and dad and my, my grandma were all, you know, just tickled, just giggling, thought that was hilarious. But I was just a little bit offended. I mean, I was a teenager, and uh, they were accusing me of being lazy pretty much, you know. And I thought, this had to come from my dad. This had to come from my dad, because my dad was always, <laughs> my brothers and I always considered him a slave driver, although I don't know how exactly true that was. I mean, you know how kids don't really like work. They would r much prefer to avoid it and play, and in my case, ride to motorcycles or to mini bike. And my dad was, was very strict about us performing tasks around the house, specifically yard work. You know, our lawn had to be mowed, uh, the garden had to be weeded, and we were given direct assignments, like every day, of things that had to be accomplished. There was no negotiation on it. And aside from that, you had to have your homework done and everything else. So, of course, I was never happy about that, and my brothers weren't either. Uh, but. We, we, we would have to go out and perform those duties and get those jobs done. Uh, and that didn't come without complaint either. I mean, we were always whining and complaining about it. Because, I mean, who wants to, you know, you're, you're a 15-year-old you're a kid and you really want to spend a, an hour or two out in the garden on your hands and knees pulling weeds out of the uh, string beans? Yeah, it, it wasn't uh, something that we enjoyed doing. 
And then my dad would come home from work and he'd always check our work to make sure that we accomplished what he had asked us to do. And there were consequences if you didn't, but we knew that. We knew there was consequences, so we followed through uh, to get, you know, make sure that our job was done so that we didn't have to face the consequences. But I asked myself, you know, how did that affect me today? And, you know, it, it, it did absolutely have some bearing on the way I am today. I mean, just look at my yard. <laughs> you know, if you don't think that's a product of my dad uh, and, and his... Uh, you know, everything has to be perfect. So my yard is mowed, my landscape is all done nicely, my flower garden over there is is perfect, there's no weeds in it, everything's all trimmed, uh, painted, the buildings are painted. I mean, everything's in tip-top shape, and that's the way my dad was. So, you know, it rubbed off on me that... that now, now, do I have ambition? That's the question. Uh, ambition to me is like an eagerness to accomplish something. Like, I, you know, you, you, you can't wait to get out there and tackle it to get, the, to get that job done. You're, you have ambition. And I'm not sure that I, that I have that today. You know, at 70 years old, when I wake up in the morning, I generally have a, a job list in my mind of things that I want to accomplish today. I mean, I can just look around and see things that need done, and some things I neglect, and some things I, I dive right into. One of the things I neglect is my housework. Uh, like any man, I think, um, and I'm not saying housework is a woman's thing, but men generally don't like sweeping the floor, uh, doing the dishes, and things like that. I do my best to keep my house in pretty good order. It's not messy by any means, but I have two cats and they make a mess. The, the one when he eats, he gets food all over the floor and it's a, like an everyday thing. So there's days when I look at it and go, I just cleaned that up, I'm not doing it again. And I walk away and I leave the mess on the floor. Um, the litter boxes in the basement, they'll kick litter all over the place, and I sweep that up every day. But there's days when I go down there and I go, I don't even feel like sweeping that up today. You ju I just swept, swept it up yesterday, and you got stuff all over the floor again. So, yeah, I neglect some duties. I have no ambition to accomplish those things, you know. Uh, but there are projects that I'm eager to do, uh, especially if it's something that's creative. You know, I, I, I almost get excited to do things that are creative, but uh, those kind of come far and few between. So generally, I have to push myself. Now, I've said this before, that you don't really get anything unless you work for it. And I've been accused of being wealthy or, you know... <laughs> just being lucky that I have everything that I have, and it's way more than that. Everything that you see that I have here, I did myself. I figured out a way to get it done. Blood, sweat, and tears, hard work. Uh, all the, all the, the, the structure, building, the, the landscape, everything. And I mean, I'm not saying I did it all by myself. I had help from friends, uh, depending on what the challenge was, what I was doing. Uh, but it, it didn't come without pushing myself. You know, there's so many people nowadays, and, and I think our, uh, our kids are getting even in a worse rut, where it's so easy just to sit on the couch and veg all day and not be pushed to do anything. And it, it comes with parenting. I mean, in, in my case, I didn't like the way my dad pushed me to get things done, but look at what the impact is that he left on my life. I mean, when you look around and see everything that I have and how well cared for everything is, that comes from the upbringing that I had. That 
you know, you have to put effort forth if you want things nice in your life. I, I say too, you know, that you have to have a dream, you have to ha have a, a plan in your head, and you can accomplish just about anything if you put your heart to it. Uh, there, there's a means to get just about anything done. And, and you know, and I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, I, I wanna be a millionaire, so I'm gonna, that's gonna be my dream. No, uh, but you know, you think in your mind someday, I wanna have a nice house, I wanna have some property, maybe I wanna live in the country, May, you know, you can make that happen. You just have to push yourself to it. You have to take steps forward to reach that goal. And that's not always easy. And sometimes it seems almost impossible. But everything, like I say, everything with everything, there's a will, there's a way you can figure out how to get it done. Even if you have to twist some arms and pull some strings, there's ways to get that stuff done. So yeah, I don't know if you call it ambition, but I get up in the morning and I push myself to do tasks. Um, yesterday I took my weed, weed, weed whacker. I have a Red Max weed whacker. It's a pretty nice commercial grade weed whacker. It, it's very powerful. It, it'll cut through just about anything. And I went all the way down both sides of my driveway where the stuff was starting to hang over and just clipped that all the way back out to the street, did a little bit of the ditch line out there and whatnot. And uh, that was a pretty heavy, hard duty task. And, and, you know, when you're using the weed eater, you're swinging back and forth, back and forth. And I, I pulled a muscle in my back up, my sciatic, you know, so I'm walking with a limp today. It hurts if I put pressure on that right uh, hip it just shoots pain up my back. So somehow I pinched a nerve when I was twisting around with that darn weed eater. But I got it done and it looks beautiful down there. Everything's trimmed up really nice. <coughs> and I take pride in that. Uh, was I eager to go out and do it? Did I have the ambition to go out and do it? No, I pushed myself to go do it because I knew if I didn't do it, the stuff would just keep hanging over into the yard and it would look really terrible and people would come over and, you know, it, I mean, there's a house, maybe two houses up here. There's a guy that lives back in the, his house kind of sits back in the woods and you can't see his house from the street. And he does absolutely zero landscape, zero. He doesn't mow a lawn. He he doesn't trim any bushes or anything. And his driveway just looks like a a little dirt path that goes up to the house with weeds and and the branches all hanging over. And from what I've seen, small glimpses of his house during the winter when the foliage is off, it doesn't even look like his house was ever finished. You know, you can still see some of the uh, wrap that they you know that insulation wrap on parts of the house so he does absolutely nothing and I, I think I know for sure one of his hobbies is shooting because over there I hear him shooting sometimes thousands of rounds of ammunition but he has no ambition to do anything with his yard now is that okay hey, if, if you're happy with that then then that I guess that that's your life but how can you take pride in anything that you that you have when you don't take care of it? I, I only t tend to guess what the inside of his house looks like after seeing the the property. What I have here to me is a blessing. I mean, God gives me the strength, and God's given me this place to keep me busy. It keeps me occupied. Uh, it's it's not a museum it's not a a tourist attraction um it's just me it's just a reflection of me and who i am and what i like and i put my efforts forth to make it happen so yeah it's interesting how you know a button like that <clears throat> i've got plenty of ambition i just hate to waste it on work and that's stuck with me all these years. 
I mean, it isn't something I dwell on, but once in a while it comes up and I remember it, and I think, you know what? Why would they... I, I don't understand why they would do that to me. Uh, it, it, to me, it was a, a being, an accusation of being lazy. And, and I don't, I never have considered myself lazy. I've always been a productive kid. I mean, even when I was a kid, I was very productive. I was building go-karts, mini bikes. I, I put together an old motorcycle. I was always had a project. I built this huge tree house, you know. So I had lots of ambition to do those things. I just didn't have the ambition to do the assignments that I was handed. So... For me to get that button, I have plenty of ambition. I just hate to waste it on work. That, that always bothered me. Always bothered me. I, I said before, my dad was a, a very devout Christian man. He was a uh, churchgoer all the time, every Sunday. Uh, he was the choir director. He was the Sunday school teacher. He was the uh, church deacon. Uh, he was, yeah, he, he did every, he was, we, we even uh, did the janitorial work in the church and maintenance work. So it was all about church, everything. And it was in the home life too. So we li lived a very structured, uh, strict life as we grew up as kids. And the day I turned 18, I was out of there. I told them, I said, I'm 18 now, I'm gone. I'm out of the house. I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna go, but I'm out of here. And I left and, and didn't come back. Started a life of my own. <laughs> and here I am today. Well, cats, thanks for joining me on this uh, adventure through life. Uh, you never know where the journey's gonna take you from one day to the other. Uh, today, being that there's rain in the four, it was pouring a little bit ago. It's not now. It's just gray, but everything's wet and dripping. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm going to take the truck and head into town. I got to pick up groceries and other things today too. So, thanks for joining me. If you like my video, hit me with a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And until next time, cats, I will. I'll catch y'all later. Okay.